one. Uh, I, uh, I have too much respect for your language to try to speak it. Um, I tell people when I travel that I apologize because I'm American, so that means I only speak one language. I'm from Texas, so I don't speak it very well. Uh, so uh, I'll do the best I can. I speak really fast, though, so I do apologize that in advance, but I've got a lot of content. As the year goes on, I add more and more content to my talk, so it's a little bit fresh, a little bit different. Uh, so it, it's probably going to run long, and I apologize to everybody that's going to miss something because of that. But uh, let's start off with my legal disclaimer. Uh, I am not a lawyer though I have played one on the internet before, uh, but I am not a lawyer, but I do know how to Google very well. So this is my legal disclaimer. Basically what it means is when I go through this talk and I tell you some of the really bad, horrible, mean, dirty, low down, you know, shameful things that I've done uh, for my job, and you're gonna be thinking to yourself, wow, he's a jerk. I don't like that guy. You need to remember the kittens. I'm adorable. Okay, I will never try to steal from you, kill you, or financially ruin you unless you pay me first. There's always a contract, so I'm one of the good guys. I'm just really good at being bad for good people. So that's the way you need to think about it. So during this talk, when you think about that, you just need to remember the kittens, and, and we'll go from there. Now, this next talk, this next part is uh, the name of the talk. It's called Breaking in Bad. You will notice a theme. The best thing about this show, I think, is that a lot of people fam are familiar with the, the TV show, so it's, it's not unheard of. Otherwise, the jokes aren't going to be as funny. Well, some say they're not funny to begin with, but, you know, they're going to be even less so. Uh, so that's the title of the talk. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I don't like talking about me. It's just uh, I do red team and I do blue team. Everything else that you can find, you can find on the Internet, unfortunately. Uh, and there's my Twitter handle, so uh, that works. But let's get right into it. I hate APT. Who plays the APT drinking game? APT for me is actually what it means is, is that's what companies tell their shareholders when they get fished by a phishing scam. They want to make sure that they, they, they don't lose too much face. Oh, no, 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 no. It was advanced. It's like, you know, they actually spelled our name correctly. And it was very persistent. They were really sending a lot of those emails out. And we felt threatened. So, yes, it was APT. We were attacked by APT. And they go after it. And we also say things like, you know, well, they're going after the low-hanging fruit. They're going after the low-hanging fruit. we got to make sure that we're taking care of the low-hanging fruit. And my just message to you right now is stop trying to protect your low-hanging fruit. And you're like, Jason, why would you say that? Because your fruit's on the ground, okay? The fruit's on the ground. They're not even worried about trying to climb up there and trying to get the low-hanging fruit when they can pick it right off the ground. So let's start worrying about that stuff first. Then we can go to the low-hanging fruit. So what I tell people, and the, basically the way I explain it, is that forget about advanced persistent threat. I just want to be bad. Because being bad is, is fun, right? And it be, being bad is basically basic, adorable destruction. That's how I roll. So I just usually do bad things. And it's really easy to be bad. Here are some of the indicators of someone trying to be bad. Uh, step one is recon mode. It's only about two hours of Google and victim's own website. I have never used a full two hours on any engagement I've ever been on. I have never spent two hours on Google. Usually it's 30 minutes to 45 minutes. The longest was an hour and 45 minutes for me to find a successful way into a company uh, by doing research. Two, SE mode is usually walking to the victim's location and winging it, sometimes without doing number one, which happens quite frequently because I'm not very professional and I don't adult very well. Uh, step three, uh, pwnage mode is basically plugging in a device to the victim's computer or network. Uh, most of the time it's with their help. Uh, do I need their help when I do it? No, I just think it's funnier that way. You know, I mean, I'm just, you know, things. Yeah, can you get out of your chair and plug? Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, step four, the Internet says that's supposed to be there. Um, and five, it's profit because, you know, the check clears, I get paid, and they learn some valuable lessons, and they're going to be better protected afterwards. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. So that works out. Now, another thing that I do is I only use usually three basic approaches when I'm trying to break into a company. Uh, I don't do a lot of the, you know, pretexting or all that other stuff, you know, where you actually have to actually work for it. It's like I don't like doing that. Uh, so I usually go in as a tech repair guy, 
uh, delivery, job applicant, customer, or wanderer. Those are passive roles. Those are where I'm actually asking you to help me. Uh, so it's being more passive, where it's like, oh, I'm here to work on the computers. I have to give you a word of advice, though. Never try to break into a company dressed as a plumber unless you know how to plumb. Because you never know when something's going to go down where they're like, oh, we're glad you're here. We're having a problem with the toilets. And you're like, well, let me go get my wrench thingy from the truck. I'll be right back. And then you're just done. It's over. So I always go in as a tech repair guy because I can do that. Uh, two is the more aggressive role. That's where you're trying to be the authoritative figure. That's where you're going as an auditor, an executive, policy enforcement, where you're demanding help. You're trying to get, you have authority over these people. And usually that's in the engagement, I'm usually in a suit. They're making me wear a tie. And if you make me wear a tie and a suit on an engagement, I'm going to make you pay for it. I promise you. So it's not too hard for me to found, sound cranky and stuff, you know, when I'm doing that. Excuse me, I'm here for the surprise inspection to the server room. I need access now. What part of surprise inspection do you not understand? If you were supposed to know about that, then you would have already been here waiting for me, and I wouldn't have had to wait five minutes. Let me in now. Thank you very much, or I'm putting you on the report. I don't have all day. And that's the aggressive mode. See, it's like that's a door. It's like people usually open the door at that point. Uh, I still end up putting them on the report anyway because, you know, they let me in. Uh, three is crazy off the wall personalities. Uh, I mean, I broke into a palace hotel in the south of France, uh, barefoot, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pajama bottoms, and a hacker t-shirt. Why? Because it was fun. It's like, uh, and I got in. And the funny part about that whole engagement was I did not have a camera with me at the time. So I would walk by the security cameras. And as I walked by, I would smile going, and then I would go to, and then when I was done, I was inside the access for over 30 minutes. I had access to the server area, the, the, the uh, employee area. When I got bored of walking through here unmolested, it's like I actually went up to one of the employees, one of the, the guys who was doing the, uh, uh, what's that called for the uh, food, uh, room service guy. And I was like, just immediately went up to him. I was like, uh, I'm not supposed to be here. Um. I shouldn't be here. Where am I? I I need to be not here. Uh, and it's always you always end it by looking at them like they're doing something wrong. Like, and and you, he was very helpful. It's like he actually put me in the employee elevator that let me up into the office area on the first floor behind the front desk. So I had full access to the corporate headquarters area where someone had, unlocked, had an unlocked computer and their hotel uh, keys on the desk. It was a five-star hotel. They provided everything. I was really appreciative of that. Uh, but it's like, so just some of these off-the-wall personalities. So what I'm going to do, and this is one of the problems when you talk about social engineering. If I had a really cool technique or a hack or some kind of vulnerability exposed, I can do demo mode, right? You know, do the demo and show you all these things. Well, the problem with social engineering, it's really hard to do demos because people are like, I tell you all these really cool, weird things that I've done. And you're like, sure, you know, whatever. I've had people ask me, like, Jason, you need to write an autobiography. And I'm like, I barely believe half the stuff that's happened to me. And I was there. So it's like, so what I've done is I'm going to show you three stories from three different roles, from the passive role, the aggressive role, and the, oh my gosh, they actually fell for it role. And, uh, and but I actually have some video and some pictures to help actually correspond to, to some of these things that have occurred. So we're going to start off with the first one, the passive one. And this was, uh, this is, this story is so outlandish, they actually did turn it into a comic strip. Uh, it's called the uh, Beirut Bank Job. It's like, oh, yep, uh, I, oh, I put this in there. Is this the audio that's for it? Oh, psych. Okay, that would have been even more awkward. Okay, so there we go. So uh, this was a job. I was hired by a bank in uh, Lebanon to break into uh, their headquarters in Lebanon, uh, Mon Jordan, and Nicosia, Cyprus. It's like, so, you know, I just went around on a, a whole month trip of just, you know, doing bad things. It was amazing. Uh, so they wanted to see how quickly um, I could compromise their internal network. How could I turn a physical compromise, a social engineering engagement, into actually them losing money from their computers? So I told them, it's like, well, I'd need about five things to do that. I would need a computer. I, well, first of all, let's see, I need a user ID, right? User ID, a password. They had two-factor authentication, so I need one of the smart cards, right? And then I need one of their computers, 
and I would need their um, internal network access. So access to their internal network. I'd need those five things. Well, I'd already pissed off the executive during the, 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 the launch meeting. So he decided to go and say, okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to take you to three random locations because you're so good. We'll take you to three random locations, and you go in and you see if you can get all those things. And I'm like, sure, why not? Sounds good. Challenge accepted. So we go to the first branch, and I walk in. For the first time, I don't know the manager's names. I did no recon. I have no information. And how did that work out for them? From me walking in from the first time, if you look at the timestamp, 11.59 and 36 seconds, to when I had full access to the bank behind the teller line, less than two minutes and 22 seconds. Walked in like I owned the place, you know, because that's the way I roll. And it's like, uh, and I ended up, uh, now sometimes that doesn't work. I have literally walked in like I knew exactly where I was going and then ended up at a brick wall or a staircase that went nowhere. And I'm like, well, this is awkward. It's like, uh, and then I have to like, you know, try to figure out another way to do something. This one worked out really good because I went down this hallway and there was the bank manager. He had someone in his room that was even better because someone was in his office. So it's like, I just stay out, you know, creepily, you know, behind his, behind his door. And I just wait there for about 30 seconds. As soon as that 30 seconds was over, I walk over to the executive in the next office, and I go to her, it's like, yes, I'm here with uh, headquarters. We're looking at the domain uh, uh, control policies and stuff, you know, the domain, domain admin policies for your uh, group policies for USB rights to make sure that the IPv6 is not conflicting with IPv4 because of the TCP reset problems that we're having with the USB uh, driver. So uh, I need to plug in this USB drive. Don't worry about the rubber ducky on it and check the, your security. Uh, and they're like, sure. And it's like, so I plug it in. Command prompt pops up, and I'm like, okay, cool, that means it's working. Let me take out a real camera and take a picture of your screen just to prove this, just for authentication. There we go, thank you, I'm done, and I go to the next one. And then I go to the, uh, I go to the lady in the teller line, it's inside the teller line, and I try to say, hey, I need to go in here, and it's like, I need to look at this, I'm checking for USB rice, you know, flux capacitor, the lithium crystals, this, and yes, it's like, I need to do this, and she lets me in. And I actually, uh, if you actually look at the video, I actually made this guy get up, uh, while he was doing, uh, while he was working with this customer right here, this customer, uh, I did not mess with the customer, even though he was at the time depositing two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash. So uh, he was also armed. I was not mess. He was the only person in the whole entire branch I was actually worried about. <laughs> it's like I wasn't scared about anything else in that branch except for him. <laughs> So it's like I made sure I didn't piss him off. It's like so uh, I actually had one of the executives that was there and stuff, you know, watching this. It's like he's like, go take some of the money because they were so frustrated because I was getting away with so much. And I just looked at him like, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to try that. So uh, so we go there and I start going in. And I talk to the bank manager. The bank manager comes up. It's about 15 minutes into this engagement. I was there for over 22 minutes. But the uh, bank manager comes up about 10 minutes in. And he says, Hey, I need, I need you to uh, uh, look at this and stuff, you know, look at this one of these computers. And I'm like, oh, you got a problem with the computer. Well, I'm not a plumber, but I can do desktop support, so let's go take a look at the computer. So I look at the computer, and I'm like, you know what? This is not really working really well. Uh, I'm going to get you a new one from the head office. It's no problem. His eyes lit up like it was Christmas. And he's like, uh, can you come over and look at the scanner? We're having a problem with the scanner over here. So I'm like, sure. So I come over here, look at the scanner, and like, you know what? That doesn't seem to be working. Let me get you another one from, uh, from headquarters. We got some monitors. Can you come look at these monitors? And I'm like, okay, I wasn't supposed to tell anybody, but you're pretty cool. Uh, we're actually, I'm actually here because we're doing a massive refurb of all the offices. We're bringing in all new equipment to all the offices all through Lebanon. And I like you. You're cool. So I'm putting you at the top of the list. In about two weeks, they're going to give you all new equipment. He was so happy until the end of the engagement, which we'll, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit later. It's like, um, because, well, actually, I'll, I'll just get into it now. So, so what happens is, this is one of the things about me. I don't do classic red team engagements. I don't just go in, you know, break everything, write a report, and then three months later, you know, someone gets a memo saying that they something bad happened and they should have done something. What I do is I break in, destroy everything, but then I wait two minutes outside of the building. And then after two minutes, I walk back into the building and I talk to every single person individually and I tell them, uh, remember when you helped me walk in through that door? Yeah, that wasn't good. I'm a bad person. 
I was doing bad things and you helped me do those bad things. And you shouldn't feel bad about it because you didn't realize what a bad attack would be, but that's how they are. Let's learn from this. Let's create a teachable moment. And that's what I like creating. I like creating teachable moments. I like when the good guys win. So I liked showing them what they need to do to, to protect it. Well, this branch failed so miserably that uh, I waited till after the whole bank branch was closed, and not just because I was scared of that dude, but, uh, but I waited till the whole branch closed, and then I went and talked. We got everybody, all the crew together, and the, one of the executives actually was translating into Arabic just so they would understand exactly how bad this was. And was telling, and I'm, so I'm going through my whole thing, telling them what I was doing wrong, uh, what I was a bad guy, and the bank manager, halfway through, just raises his hand like he's in school, like, and I'm like, yes? And he's like, the, the computers, we, we still get the computers, right? <laughs> and I felt horrible because I was like, no, I'm a horrible person. I was lying to you because I needed to, you to I'm bad. And he's just like, I felt like I kicked a puppy. I felt really bad about it, okay? It was not fun. It's like, uh, but it's, so it was not a good situation. But I was there for over 20 minutes. And in the process, that guy in the snappy sweater vest, I was able to get his employee ID, his password, and he gave me the smart card. So right out the first gate, I got three of the things that I needed out of the five, right? So I'm happy. But I'm also, I have to admit with you, I felt a little bad about doing that one because that one was like really massively horrible. So I decided to go to the next branch, and I needed a computer, right? So I walk in, walk down a hallway, it ends up in a break room. So I stop for a second to get some water because, you know, poning people is thirsty work. Uh, so I drink a little bit of water, and I wait for a couple minutes. Why do you wait? Because if you walk in straight into a place, then you're someone that's foreign. You're someone that's like, okay, this person, why is this person coming in? You're more suspicious. But if you come in and you wait a little bit, and then you're coming from a different direction, subconsciously the person's like, okay, he's coming from this direction. He's more accepted. He's more susceptible. It's like this is, he's obviously legit. Uh, I am never legit. So, um, so I wait, and I go straight in from the break room. I go straight in behind the teller line right there. And I felt really bad about that manager. So this time, I didn't want to lie to anybody. I didn't, I, that would, I, it would just, I couldn't handle it. So I said zero. I did not say hello. I did not say anything to anyone behind this telephone line. The guy right beside me that's working with that uh, customer didn't even say hello, didn't even acknowledge him as I stole the computer. I literally unplugged it disconnected all the cables and took it with me. I didn't take the keyboard because I'm not greedy, okay? It's like, but I did take the computer. That proved my point, I think. So now I have a user ID, password, smart card, and a computer. How hard was it, do you think, to get the network access at the next branch? Uh, the answer was pretty easy, in case you're wondering. It's like, because anybody that walks in and stuff and says, it's like, hey, I got the computer working with the network because I'm from headquarters for doing blah, 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 you know, and they'll let you in. So that worked out really well. So that was how you do passive role uh, on an engagement and how easy sometimes it can be. Zero recon. I knew not one person's name in any one of those branches. It's like I had no pretext. I had none of that. It was just, I went in and looked like I knew what I was doing. It's like, you know, secret little thing. I never know what I'm doing. Okay, so it worked out well, though. So the next one is more of an authoritative role. I was asked to do a state treasury in the United States for one of the states. I can't tell you what state because they're still pissed at me. Uh, I make a lot of people angry for some reason when I, when I break into their places, you know, and they didn't expect it was going to happen. But it does bring up a really important thing because they were pwned so hard from the network side of it. One of the things that their IT team was saying was like, well, yeah, but you'd have to get in physically to do that. You can't do that. And so the network security uh, company that hired me was like, Jason, come in here and show them that you can do that. So like, okay, that's fine. And so the company, uh, the state treasurer was like, okay, 
Well, if you're going to do that, we got to do it. We got to have a scope. We got to have, you know, everybody knows what a scope of work is, right? You know, the, the rules of engagement. In other words, that's the way they try to tie your hands around so you don't actually get as effective as you could be so they can feel better about themselves. Because, I mean, let's face it, this is an attacker, right? An attacker scope is this. Everything right here. This is it. You know, kitchensink.exe, they can throw at you. Well, a client comes up to you and says, hey, we want you to attack us just like an attacker would. And you're like, awesome, I can do that. But can you do it between Monday through Friday? Because, you know, we want to make sure our full team is able to handle something that comes up. And I'm like, okay, sure, I'll attack you just like an attacker would. And like, that's great, that's awesome. Oh, but we got a lot of production stuff going on between, uh, can you do it between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m.? It's like, that's a good time for us. I'm like, sure, but attack us like an attacker would. Okay. It's like, it's like, that's great. Oh, but our productions, are, man, we've been trying to update them. They're a little patchy, little specific. You know what? We got this development server on this IP address. Can you go after us? But attack us just like an attacker would. And I'm like, yeah, that's realistic. Sure, why not? It's like, well, on this one, because they were a little upset with me, my scope of work was like this. Because I went into the headquarters, that building, uh, the treasury, and guess what? It was pretty freaking secure. They did a pretty good job of that. Uh, they had bulletproof glass. They had uh, tinted windows. They had a, like a, a nice secured lobby. I did find a vulnerability in the headquarters, though. It's like I went down into the basement area where there was a, uh, a cafe, and there was a storage area to the right where there was a uh, dumbwaiter. It's like a little, you know, dumbwaiter thingy where you could, you know, get into the next floor. Uh, but I looked into the dumbwaiter, and there were spiders, and so therefore I could not get in. They would not let me have a flamethrower to take care of that. So uh, I was not, it was impenetrable. I could not, I could not break into the headquarters because spiders. Uh, so they did have an office building. They had a suite in an office building 50 miles outside of the city. Humans like to think physically, not logistically. They're thinking, oh, this is 50 miles away. We don't have to worry about security that much. It's not like they're, they're, they're inside our, our network. If I'm on their computer at that place 50 miles away, it's like being sitting next to the state treasurer himself because they had a direct connection into the headquarters. As a bad guy, why would I go and try to break into the place with spiders when I can go into the office building? So I said, I told them, like, I'm going to attack your office building. I'm like, well, that sounds good, but we got a few rules for you. It's like, uh, first of all, you can't come in until after 5.30 in the evening because, you know, we don't want to disturb anybody and stuff, you know, while, while you're doing your pen test. I'm like, sure, fine, whatever. Oh, but, you, but you can't break into any of the doors. You know, you can't use, you know, your, your lock picks or, or anything like that. And I, you got to understand, I don't do lock picks. I'm not that professional, okay? My, my main way to get into a building is either cardboard or crowbars. It's like those are very effective. You, you know, put the cardboard between the two doors and the motion sensor goes off and you're in. Crowbar, well, that's sort of self-explanatory, right? So it's like, so I don't do, that's usually how I get into places. So, uh, but they can't use any of those. These were the other factors that I had. I could talk to no one coming in or out of the building because I didn't know if they were treasury employees. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. It's like, two, I could only stay in the public areas if I did get in. Okay, that's a little limiting, but okay, fine, whatever. Uh, three, I could only talk to the cleaners, but I was not allowed to lie to them. And I'm like, you do realize what social engineering is, right? It's like, it's sort of my thing. It's like, and I don't know, no, they're not part of our company. They're, they're uh, external employees. Uh, you, can't, you can't do that to them. It's like, that would be uh, uh, horrible. And Lord knows, you know, a criminal's not going to be lying. It's like, you know, that would be rude. It's like, as they're trying to steal money from your treasury. It's like, why would they do that? So I'm like, sure, let, let's see how that worked out for them. Here we go here. And... I pushed a button. I know I did. Hello? There we go. This is the horrible video of my nose. We love that. I love this part because my nose. And we're recording. There we go. Need a little bit? Right. So here I am coming out. I got to try the side door right there. 
go over there, I try the door. It's locked. No freaking crowbar. So, I have to now walk to the front of the door, to the front of the building. I love this part of the talk because drink. This is the longest part of the exploit. The biggest part of the compromise was walking to the front door. And I'm sorry for the uh, need for Dramamine and the motion sickness, but I'm using a high depth video recorder watch that is recording the video. That's where that video is coming from. When I break into a place, I'm a walking, talking Google streetcar. So here I am. I try the front door. Not working. So I take out my hacking tool. My phone. Play Angry Birds. Looks like I'm doing something important. I wait 10 seconds. That's all it took for her to walk out. And there we go. I broke into an office in another country over seven floors of their office building where they had an elevator lobby where you needed access to get in, card access to get in. And every single time that I got in, it's like I was holding up a phone. It wasn't even my phone, so the guy didn't even have Angry Birds loaded on it. I was just like faking it. It's like, but every single time I would wait out into the lobby area and compromised every one of the floors that they let me get into. It's like they kept getting a little bit more insistent, so I asked them if they wanted me to break into the CEO's floor, and they're like, no, no, okay, we're good. You, you did good. That's like, thanks. I thought so. So now comes the next part, and this is what, uh, th this one was like the, the, the worst part of this engagement because I had to stay in the public areas, right, until I could find a cleaning person. I had to stay in the lobby for two hours. Y'all seriously underestimate my ADD, okay? two hours doing nothing but waiting for someone to come by so I could talk to them. There is only so many angry birds you can flip, so many tweets you can tweet, and Facebook posts you can like in two hours, people. My battery was down to 2%. It was danger time. Okay, so I'm sitting there just waiting, going stir crazy, waiting for these two hours. I'm just waiting for something to happen. And I hear the cleaning lady up on the second floor. I tell myself, that's freaking close enough. Let's go see what happens. We're recording. Okay. Not that. This. Here we go. Now remember, I can only tell the truth. Hello. Hi. I'm in uh, trying to get back in the suite. Could you let me in real quick? Yes. Oh, what's supposed to do that? Well, let's, let's pause it first and once I get back up there. The reason why I'm pausing is I'm telling you the truth. I was there at that suite the day before. I am trying to get back into it. Wow, this is irritating. Turns out I don't Microsoft very well. Hi. I'm in, uh, trying to get back in the suite. Could you let me in real quick? So trying to get back in? Yes. Downstairs? No, no clean. Me, no. Could you let me in? I can't get in. It's like I, I just went to the bathroom and I didn't have my badge. See? I just, I couldn't get in. They wouldn't let could me you, have a crowbar. Could you try? So I couldn't get in. I had an employee badge from my day job. I didn't have it with me. Thanks, I just... So therefore, that was true. And I just got to the bathroom, don't judge I just got to do one thing real quick. I had to do only one thing, destroy their network. That's also true. Working too late. <laughs> I was working late. They were paying me for this. And I think that laugh's endearing. Don't judge me.
everything. So now we go down. Once again, the longest part of the compromise, this right here. You need key? Huh? Yeah, I, I don't have the key to get in. Oh, yes. yes. Uh -huh. I'm coming. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> and there we go. So let's fast forward. Because like I said, I'm always late. Okay. Yeah, she's got the key. Okay, I'm good. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Now, that was a lie. That last, I told her I'd see her later, and I didn't. Okay. Other than that, I used the truth and got in. So it tells companies and stuff. You know, companies like to put restraining. Uh, you know, bonds on people doing pen tests. But you need to let them understand, if a person is determined and motivated, they're getting in. So you can put whatever restraints you want with narrow the scope as much as you, a person with enough determination will get in. Now, this next one is the off-the-wall, unbelievable, I can't believe this actually worked, but it also happens to be probably one of the most worst, horrible things I've ever done on an engagement. And that's saying a lot coming from me, okay? That's, that's saying a lot. Uh, I call this engagement the Jason and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad social engineering engagement. Uh, what happened was I was doing a uh, pen test for a company in Kingston, Jamaica, for a financial institution there. And I successfully broke it in the day before. It's like uh, working with a, a team of uh, pen testers there uh, locally in Jamaica. And the company was like, well, yeah, we want you to go into our headquarters, downtown, Kingston, Jamaica. Let's just play. It's a little rough neighborhood there. And I'm like, okay, I'll try to break in there. And he's like, yeah. It's like, we'll see if we can get it. So I actually, me and the, and the team there, we spent an hour and 45 minutes trying to find a way in because it's a very secured facility. Uh, and that's when we came across this wonderful discovery. They have a charity organization that they're doing all this wonderful public good and, and good works into the community through this corporation. But that charity organization was on their same network. So that meant it was in scope. So I have the guy call saying, he's like, yeah, we're working with a TV crew in a, um, well, hold on, there we go. There we go. We tell them, that I'm a visiting TV producer from America doing a show on companies doing great works in their communities. So he sets that up. I get on the phone and say, yeah, what's going on? I just had dinner with you. And they were talking about you, and they said all the wonderful works that you do in the community is great. Uh, we want to put you on television. You guys are awesome. It's like, uh, I got to fly out at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Can I come and meet you today? Oh, 2.30? Okay, hold on a second, hold on a second. Cancel my three. Can no, this is more important. Cancel my three. I got you. We'll, we'll be there. Ciao. And it's like, and I show up 15 minutes early to the main office building. And I go in there, and they've got like this bolted door and stuff, you know, opens up. It is the prettiest, most comfortable man traps I've ever seen, okay? Because you had to get buzzed in, and then you're in a lobby with like couches and chairs, and that's all nice. And then there's the receptionist who's looking like, you know, sort of mean. And the security guard, they paid extra to be ugly and mean. So it's like, I mean, they were like serious about security. And I go up and say, like, yeah, I'm here to, to the charity organization. She's like, uh, that's the across the street. And it's like, uh, and that's not the guy saying that was the lady. And I was like, okay, uh, well, can I go to the restroom real quick? And she's like, sure. And I'm like, cool. It's not because I drink so much Diet Pepsi. It's just, I get lost so many times trying to find the restroom. There was one engagement where I was lost for two hours and I never found the restroom. I found, I found their server room pretty easy. Actually. I never found the restroom. It's like, so you gotta be, it's funny how that happens. So, uh, so I go and, and I go out to, into the little atrium and stuff, you know, where the restroom is. The guy is right behind me, okay? And I'm like walking and he's walking and I'm like, I mean, I'm really at this point nervous that he's going to go into the stall with me. So it's like, so I get into the bathroom and I get in there and I have this realization that like, well, crap, I don't really have to pee right now. <laughs> so, so I have to just stand there like, you know, what's the acceptable amount of time of urination that I can get away with? And then I go to the sink, 
and I wash my hands because I don't want them to think that I'm a filthy animal, right, even though nothing happened. So I wash my hands because I'm thinking, I'm actually imagining the guard listening at the door to see what's going down. So it's like, so I get out, and there's the atrium elevator to the, the corporate area and then the lobby door. And I'm about to, like, go like this, and there's the security guard at the door just like, He did not do that, but his facial expression sort of implied it, okay? I got the hint that's what that was. So I was like, sure, yes, I'm going this way. And so I walked over. I talked to the lady. Uh, this lady was a wonderful lady. Five minutes in, I said, hey, you know, is there a, a the CEO could I talk to? Could I talk to the CEO? And they're like, sure, I can do that. Uh, so I meet the board of directors guy. And within five minutes of talking to him, it's like, you know, I can keep telling you about how wonderful this show is, but I actually have a video on this USB drive. Don't worry about the rubber ducky on it. It's like, I have this wonderful video. Let me show it to you. So I plug it into his computer, and the weirdest thing happened. Never before. This pop-up started coming up, and this weird message started. Literally, malware that was already on his computer was fighting my malware. They're like, no, I was here first. I'm like, no, but I needed to do one more thing. No, too late. It's mine. And I'm like... And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. It's like, and you know, you have to fake. Like, usually when I implant this stuff, you know, and the pop-up comes up, I act like, well, that's weird. I didn't know that was that. This time, I really meant it. i like, I have no idea what's going on on this. It's like, so he calls his desktop support guy up, and I'm freaking out now because the desktop support guy is a third-party contractor, not in scope. And I'm like thinking quick, like, oh, no, no, let me put the, let me put the, uh, 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 I've got videos on there. It's like, uh, I'll, I'll email it to you. And he's like, no, no, I'll give it to him. He really wanted to see that video, people, really bad. So he hands the USB drive off to the third-party contractor, dude. That's very, y'all heard me. He did it, not me. He handed it to him, okay? That's very important, okay? That's what my lawyers tell me anyway. So it's like, so he handed it to him. And I thought really quick, like, you know what? There's other videos on that USB drive that are uh, NDA. Uh, I got to make sure that I see which, where he plugs it in and make sure he gets to the right one. Basically, what I need you to do is to find out what other computer got compromised when they plug it into the machine. So I follow him to his work area. And he's third-party contract domain admin on several other companies as well. So that's awesome. And he plugs it into an Ubuntu machine. And as soon as he does that, I'm like, oh, thank goodness. The, uh, the malware is specifically coded for Windows. So I'm thinking, okay, I don't have to worry about it. That's when I found out Ubuntu is awesome. Because just like clockwork, it pops up. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I now have domain admin on them and all the other people that this guy works for. So win. Now, the worst part happens now, okay? I have to go back into that meeting with those people. And I talk to those two, and I'm not being, and I usually joke about a lot of stuff, obviously. I am not joking about this. These two people were wonderful, caring human beings that are trying to make their country better. The lady gave me a copy of her book. She's like the Mother Teresa of Jamaica. They are wonderful wonderful people and I spent the next 15 minutes convincing them and telling them how I'm going to put them on television yeah that bad remember the kittens so it's like so I go in and halfway through I literally I was getting into it I started believing it I was like I, I can see it now this is what's going to happen we're going to have a lady working on her computer she's going to be working on her computer at a cube farm area stuff you know and, and on the one of the floors she's going to be working on the cube farm we're going to pan back and I want to do a fade over going across the call center, seeing everybody doing work, you know, like picking up print jobs, talking to people around the water cooler, and it's going to go out till it gets to the window. And when it gets to the window, it's what we call in the business a fade and transition. We're going to do a fade and transition, a blur, and it's going to be on the streets of Jamaica now. And there's going to be a small child who needs food. And that lady that was there working on the computer, you're going to see her now down there with that girl feeding her, and it's going to show how the work that you do in the company actually translates to direct impact to the people on the streets of Jamaica. I mean, it really would make a pretty good show. I was, I was like really getting into it. So I get finished with this, talking to these people, and I get downstairs, and I wait outside the building for two minutes. And then I wait for three minutes. Then I wait five minutes. My team member, you know, comes up to me, drives up to me. He saw the day before that I would wait two minutes and go back inside. And he, he comes up to me and says, Jason, it's like, uh, aren't you going back inside? And I'm like, no. I can't tell those nice people what I just did. 
And I actually, for the first time, had to call a client and say, like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not telling them. I can't. I, I'm, I'm a horrible, horrible person. I, I can't go back and tell them what I just did to them. That's just mean, and and I don't adult very well, and, yeah, it's not going to happen. Bye. <laughs> it's like, and so for the first time ever, I could not go back in and tell them what their, their thing was. Uh, but please note, for the, fa- for the, for the record, uh, I did feel really bad about it. It's like uh, we're going to. We're having a problem with the clicky thing. It's not clicking. There we go. So the outcome was total com- compromise of the entire organization and the target company. Uh, but I did feel really bad about poning them so harshly. So, you know, you got to give me that. So the summary of this is very simple. I go in and do all these things not because of how advanced and, and, and how advanced my techniques are. It is, I tell people time and time again, this stuff is so easy, even I can do it. Stop trying to go in and tell people it's like how dark, wizardly your arts are and stuff. You know, this stuff is pretty freaking easy because human nature does not want to believe something bad is occurring. If I can go into a location and tell you that I'm here to fix on your computers versus I'm actually here to steal from you, well, the human wants to believe that you're actually there to fix the computers, not that you're stealing from them. So if you give them a reasonable story, they're usually going to fall for it. And that's what we have to teach humans to be, you know, understanding, like, not what everybody says is true. I broke into a place in uh, London, it's like Vice Headquarters, the lady looked up, I had a badge on, it was a total Apple office, everybody was using Apple computers, I'm breaking in with a Microsoft employee badge, and the lady actually questions me, she's like, uh, she's sitting down, I'm standing up, she's looking at me, she's like, that says Microsoft on it. Well, yeah, because your domain controllers and stuff, you know, for your Windows is, is uh, 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 Microsoft. Is, you know, because we're having a problem with the, t- uh, the TCP Apple talk. And so, you know, it's having a problem with the conflict of the IPv versus IPv6, you know, with the lithium crystals. So they're not uh, gelling correctly. And she's like, okay. Um, but it says hacker on it. I come with warning labels, okay? I like to give them a chance. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. You need a good hackers to go after the bad hackers. And she's like, okay, plug it in. And I'm like, and I did. She didn't even notice that the lanyard said professionally evil on it. So I thought that was odd. So what do we need to do is we need to start educating. We need to start empowering and we need to start proper enforcement of our employees. Nobody that I compromise and no one that I've ever compromised has been stupid. I have never met a stupid employee. I have never met an idiot employee. I've never broken into Congress. Uh, so I, I don't know how that's going to work. But it's like, but still, it's like users know what they're doing. They're smart. They're intelligent. It's like, and I've said before, it's like if you want to see how bad a user is and stuff, how stupid they are, take Solitaire off the machine, see how quickly it takes to get back. So what, what is the key ingredient then from a stupid user that clicks on a link to one that's smart? Basically, it's education. You teach a user how to do the, wow, that's awesome. Hold on. Did that work now? There we go. We taught a user how to do their job, right? When you hire someone, you don't start day one. Okay, here's our billion dollar machine. Go to work on it. I'm sure you know what to do. You train them. You teach them. You teach them. If I would have gone into that bank branch with a ski mask and a shotgun, I'm pretty sure the outcome would have been a little bit different. Not because the employees were smarter, but because they were trained to handle those kind of situations. They were trained for that. They were trained when things like this go down, people using this, not those guys because we're adorable, but when people come in with those things, be afraid of them. They are scary people. They're about to do bad things to you. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to act quietly listen to their demands, you're supposed to uh, do the silent alarm, you're supposed to comply, you're supposed to try to figure out how tall they are, you're supposed to figure out what their speech patterns are, you try to figure out what they were wearing, you're trying to correlate all that information because you're trained for that. We're not training people for this. And trust me, that guy in the upper left is pretty sketchy. Sorry, Darren. Uh, but it's like those are the devices that you use. We train for guys with ski masks and guns, but not geeks with USB drives. And trust me, USB drives are the most effective weapons these days. And forget about, you know, I love the show Mr. Robot, but they show how they throw those USB drives on the, on the parking lot. That is so ineffective. 
I mean, trust me, I get plenty of free USB drives. I can throw them around if I needed to. I could make it, you know, not rain, but hail. It's like if I needed to with all those USB drives I get. But what I do is something different. I walk into an engagement with a stuff, uh, a whole pack of envelopes, blank, and a marker. So I'm walking by someone's cube. I see their name plate, and I'm like, oh, good. Write their name in the, with the marker on the envelope. Take a USB drive, put it in the envelope you know, it's like seal it up, and I put it on their desk. Now you tell me, you come to your desk after going to an office meeting or something like that, and on your desk is a sealed envelope with your name on it and a USB drive, who's not plugging that in? Who's not? Exactly. So those are the things we have to start doing. We have to start educating our employees. Uh, we got a problem. It's like we're with the time, so we got. Uh, I'll go with just one of each on these things because they're going about to pull me off here. Uh, one of the things. Let's go to the, the last one. We got to create teachable events year-round, not an annual exercise in your futility. And what I'm talking about, teachable moments, something that can impact them, that they can relate to and understand as a threat. One of the ways that I do teachable moments is when I go to conferences like this, I do something to create a teachable moment, so you'll understand how it feels. So one of the ways that I do that is I pull up a Wi-Fi pineapple, and I have it going off. These are all from conferences that I've, I've attended. It's like, uh, I like some of the reactions on your faces right now. Some are like, oh, crap, what's going on? It's like, you know, and what happens, I'm a good guy, so I have no direct Internet access going off of that. There's no Internet access. No data goes through my machine. What happens is if you go to any other website on it, it'll show this. Oops, no Wi-Fi for you right now, sorry. Because, you know, once again, I'm a good guy. But that doesn't work on everybody. You know, it's like that, that doesn't work on, on, on all the machines, uh, on all the conferences, because some are more tech savvy. Other opinions, I want to tell people that it's not just a technical thing you have to worry about. So I do this. I don't wear these glasses. And I'm so thankful to get them off finally. It's a high-def video recorder that I got for $20 off of eBay. Let's watch them in action. No one here gave me permission, so don't worry, it's not from here. These were turned off the entire day. Oh, how are you doing? It's great to see you. It's great to see you too. How are you doing? Well, I'm so happy that you're here, and I understand you just got off a plane from uh, yeah, it was a, it's been a busy, busy week or so. Nice. Are you exhausted? Just a little bit. Luckily, I don't sleep much, so it's, it's really good. <laughs> well, we're so happy you're here, and I think this um, panel tomorrow is... This is the president of guy. legal reform from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce right across the street from the White House. Well, I hope they find it educational as well. well I know I did mm. when I saw you the first time. So oh, very come nice. come in and tell me a little more about what you think you're going to do tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking tomorrow I want to do a little bit different. I want to be doing a demo that uh, is not just a technical aspect of it, but can more. Can you something to drink? Well, yeah, you can. It's like uh, if you got Diet Pepsi, that'd be great. Right, let me see what I like I what I like. Okay, you do that, and I'll see what I can scrounge up over here. Hmm. This looks interesting. For your eyes only. <laughs> well, maybe not really. Now, if I do a pause and then I can do a blow up, I can get all their data. I don't have to take their data I'm out. Sure, the stuff is. I'm totally I'm scanning it right now. Okay, to be looking at because you know I'm a good guy, right? There we go. Is that yeah, there was her purse. And let me just. Oh, okay. Uh, look oh. around, but I could only find Diet Coke. Oh. I know people are particular about that. Can you uh, that? I am more than particular, so oh. thank you, but no thank you. But, uh, you know, I'll make do with what else I've, I've got, so Which it's is all good. No, I think that'll be fine. It's like I'm good. It's like I don't need you to, to, to put yourself out too much. I appreciate I it. Happy. Well, thank you. I am very happy right now, so... It's like, I, like I, but like I was saying, I think the demo uh, will be uh, really well. It's like I think it'll get people's attention, and I think uh, it'll show them the dangers of how easy data that can work? be stolen, not just via computers. 
So I think that'll mix it up a little bit. That's great. And I also wanted to uh, thank you for being part of the demo. And so I hope have everybody a good guy. enjoyed that. So you knew uh, about it. Recreation. I would not vi video thank someone you. without <laughs> their permission. You're welcome. So there. Let's go. There we go. So now that we've created those teachable moments, we need to empower them to do something with it. Do employees know what to do if somebody comes in that looks suspicious or they receive a suspicious email? Do you give them the, the power for that? Do your companies, and this is one of the key things, does your company have a number someone can call if they see something suspicious on their computer, if they see something, uh, someone suspicious or sketchy like me walking through their corridors? Do you have a number for them to call? I literally was in Amman, Jordan at a bank branch, and the bank manager is screaming at me, telling me not to plug the USB drive into the computer. And you know what my response was? You're right. I shouldn't be doing this. You should call somebody. I mean, I know I'm supposed to be here, but you don't know I'm supposed to be here. You should be. Hold on. Yeah, you should call someone if you think this is wrong. I don't want to stop you uh, because this is, this is not cool if you don't. Hold on. If you don't know about it, you should definitely talk to somebody about that because I shouldn't be doing this if you don't know. It's like that would be bad. But, I mean, I know I'm a good guy, right? So it's uh, five times. Five times I plugged it into a machine. It wasn't until I was behind the teller line and there was a computer with a stack of money on it that she got no. And I was like, okay. Let me, oh, I got this letter for you in my car. Let me go get it. <laughs> it's like way two minutes later and then told her what was going on. So, but we, so we have to give them opportunities. We have to give them a way to communicate. The last one is we need to do enforcement. It's not negative enforcement. We need to do positive enforcement. But one of the key things about being um, with enforcement is we need visibility. People don't realize and equate what you do online translates to real life. You know, I play Call of Duty. Black Ops 3 people just came out. So it was, it was, exactly, thank you. It was sort of touch and go because it came out on my daughter's birthday. So I was literally going, birthday, Call of Duty, birthday, Call of Duty. It's like, well, if I give her enough sugar, she'll crash early and I can play later tonight. And it's like, and I'm one of those run and gunner guys and stuff, you know. There are some guys that play Call of Duty and they take it way too seriously. Like, they should just join the military. Because they're like, okay, we got, we got a squad of six. It's like, okay, I need your snipers over on this side. We're going to go around his outflank. And we're going to have our mini gunners come in through the alley and stuff, you know. And we can cut them off because I've been through this map and I know the procedure. And while they're doing that, I'm screaming, Leroy Jenkins, pew, 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 America. And I'm just shooting everything, right. And it's like, you know what happens? I get shot pretty quick because I'm running around, right. And then I die. And then what happens? I back up. Pew, 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 America. Pew, 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 pew. And I'm like shooting all over the place. I get about five kills for every 20 deaths. So, you know, it works out for me. My team hates me, but I'm having a blast. So screw them, right? So you do that. But now attach an electrode to me. Attach an electrode that gives me a 1,000 volt jolt every time I get shot. How am I going to play Call of Duty then? Pew. Pew, pew. America, pew, pew. My game change will change. My gameplay will change, right? Because I do not want to get shot. <laughs> now, that's what we have to show to our users. We have to show them what they do online affects them in the real world. When you get a virus alert, go and talk to the person. Go to their desk. Show them that, first of all, that there's actually a security team because probably a lot of people in your company don't realize that. It's like one of the key things you can do that costs zero dollars is walk through your floor of your company and look under keyboards for passwords every quarter or so. Just choose a random office, a random area, and look under the keyboards, look under the monitors for passwords. One thing, first off, you're going to find them. That's going to be awkward. Uh, but the second thing is you're going to show people that there's an actual security team that is going through and doing a sweep looking for compliance. That's going to make the impression on them. So those are the things that you have to do. Now, I want to end it up. It's like I can't believe I still have some, you know, six minutes all left. It's like I want to end up with this one simple thing. This is my confession. I hated this show. Glad that he died. Spoiler alert. Sorry. It's like, uh, I hated this show. He's a bad guy doing bad things. 
our job is like some of these guys are like, hey, I'm a bad guy. It's like, sorry about that. It's like, but he's a bad guy doing bad things. He shouldn't be so happy. Part of our job as information security people and as hackers is to make him have a bad day. So let's do more of that as well. So that's one of the things I wanted to end it on. And I also wanted to go and say this. No, no, I'm serious. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> Since I have a record five minutes, is there actually any questions? Or a lot. Usually they're pushing me a off lot the stage. Of them. Hello. What do you do when you get caught? Do you have some paper with the engagement or something? Uh, actually, yes. Um, first of all, it's like I've never been caught without trying to get caught. It's like, and, that's not, and once again, that's not how good I am, people. That's just how easy it is. We've got to make sure that's done. But what I do is I carry two engagement letters, actually. I carry one that tell that well, I've got the real one, you know, from the, the company. It's got all their information. In it, and then I sort of copy it. <laughs> put the right names on it, but the phone numbers are now numbers that I control or a friend of mine or a coworker of mine phone number. And then I sort of add a paragraph. And that paragraph says, uh, if you find this, you're supposed to do all the things that you can do to help him out. You're supposed to do whatever he commands, give him access to areas that he doesn't have access to, make sure, and also make sure since this is an ongoing audit, you're not to report this or write this down in any of your logs to show that this actually occurred. It's a great paragraph. You should put it in your, your engagement letters. I literally had security, security guards, taking a server out of the server room and putting it in my car for me because it was heavy and I didn't want to carry it myself. So this guy was really awesome and helped me carry it out. And I was like, thank you. It's like, I'll definitely mention you on the report. Unfortunately, I mentioned him on the report. I didn't lie about that part. Uh, so I have two engagement letters. It's like uh, only one time, and it was in Kingston, Jamaica, someone actually even used the number and actually called. And they got the person in my car. He was like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, you know, say, and, and talk to him. But usually they don't even call the number. They just see the letter like, okay, you're cool. You're, you're legit. So... Yeah, it's like you always have your engagement letter, especially the real one. <laughs> Any other questions over right here? We have the experience that the uh, security officers who uh, um, bu bought this uh, service, that uh, because the service was uh, too successful, uh, we stopped offering it, they got fired all of the time that we uh, performed. It was either these USB sticks, right. um, spread, and, and, and... Well, that and sucks. Smart. So what, what, what do you suggest, or what advice do you get to, in order stop, to avoid this? I would say the best way to do it is stop offering red team uh, penetration test. Stop that. Because then it's a, a battle, and it's like a victor or a loser. Create security awareness training. I've always approached these engagements as security awareness training. I tell the people, it's like, look, this is to help train them. They are going to fail. That is not the, the, the solution. I hate red teamers that think the victory is in the, 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 the vanquishing of their enemy, which is the people that hired them. No, your victory is when you secure and help your client become better secured and better protected. That's your victory. And that's what you're supposed to be striving for. So it's like when I'm trying, I've only had one engagement where the president of the company, the CEO of the company was telling me, well, I want you to do this beer fishing campaign. And I want the name of everybody that failed. And, it's like, and he said, my scope of engagement was you can pick one person to 100, but I want a successful rate. So I chose one person, the CEO. <laughs> he clicked on the link within 12 hours of me sending it to him. And then I gave him the report. I am never getting hired by him again, but it doesn't matter. It was the principle of the thing. He, he understood that everybody is going to fall for it. So that's what happens. You teach these as teachable moments. Only twice in my life has someone been fired for these things, uh, for my engagements. And both times, they were totally freaking justified. 
It's like I'll go, I can't go into it right now, but trust me, they were. I'll tell you later about the stories because they were horrible people and they deserve what they got. Uh, but no, the employees, though, in the general, they're not trained. We have to create that training. And one of the best ways, if a computer is not patched, you patch it. There is a patch for human stupidity, and that is education. Once you show them what a bad guy would do, once you show them and they experience that, then they'll learn from that experience and they'll be less trusting. They'll be a little bit more security minded, a little bit more security conscious. I tell people uh, when you get into these kind of engagements and you're trying to, to, to do this and you look at it like the person like is failing, it's like they're not failing, they're just learning. It's like I don't go and we can't tell people that it's just the stove is hot. You know, everybody's got to find out that that stove is hot. But once they do, mother, they know the stove's hot. They're not doing it again. And if they keep falling for these social engineering and these phishings, then they're probably a bad person that's trying to ruin your company anyway. You should get rid of them. But, uh, but other than that, it's like it, they'll learn from that educational process. I'm like the inoculation. It's like I'm trying to protect them by giving them what to look for. And that's how you approach it. Never approach it as uh, we're here to show you your vulnerabilities because we're not. We're here to help train your employees to be wary of social engineering uh, people and people trying to break in physically. That's how you approach it. So if they still are doing, they still try to fire people, they still try to do it, they suck. And it's like and you shouldn't work for them. It, money's not that important versus trying to secure people. Thank you so much for your presentation. I see you, you have everybody like hypnotized. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you guys.